Good day everyone! Sa video ito ay pag-uusapan natin ang ideal gas models. By the end of this video, dapat ninyong maintindihan kung ano-ano ang mga criteria para masabi natin ang isang gaseous substance ay ideal gas. Pangalawa, dapat nyo ring malaman ang iba't ibang types of ideal gas energies at ang mga formula na kaakibat nito. Pangatlo, dapat din kayong maging familiar sa iba't ibang forms ng ideal gas equations na recommended gamitin depende na lang sa given sa inyong mga word problems. So paano nga ba natin malalaman na ang isang gaseous substance ay ideal gas? Ano-ano ang mga kondisyon na dapat masatisfy para masabi natin ang isang gas ay isang ideal gas? Una sa lahat, dapat ang mga particles ng ating gaseous substance ay may rapid at random motion. Not only that, but uh, these rapid and random motion should follow the Newton's laws of motion. Take note that the motion of these particles should be continuous and not intermittent. Pangalawa, dapat walang attractive or repulsive intermolecular forces between the particles. This criterion is actually very important because uh, it is what differentiates ideal gases from real gases. So kung meron ng intermolecular forces between the particles, whether they are attractive or repulsive, chances are these gases are real gases. Pangatlo, dapat ang distance ng mga ideal gas particles ay sobrang malaki if we compare them to the diameter of the particles themselves. Ibig sabihin, yung mga gas particles natin ay dapat sobrang magkakalayo with each other. Pangapat, in cases na may collisions between the gas particles and the walls of the container, ang mga collision na ito ay dapat purely elastic. At panghuli, dapat ang temperature ng ideal gas ay proportional sa average kinetic energy ng molecules. The most common form of the ideal gas equation is written as follows. We have PV is equal to N times RU times T. In this notation, P is the absolute pressure of the gas na usually ay in kilopascals kung tayo ay gumagamit ng SI units. Ang V naman ay ang volume occupied by the ideal gas usually in cubic meters. N is the number of kilomoles of the ideal gas, and RU is the universal gas constant that has a numerical value of 8.314 kilojoules per kilomole kelvin. Take note na ang universal gas constant denoted by RU ay fixed in value, at iba pa ito sa individual gas constants ng mga ideal gas. In fact, ang mga individual gas constants na tatalakayin natin maya-maya ay derived mula sa universal gas constant na ito. For the sake of clarity, let us denote R with the subscript U as the universal gas constant. Take note na may ibang libro na gumagamit ng R bar instead of RU to denote the universal gas constant. Finally, T is the absolute temperature in Kelvin if we are using SI units. Now the ideal gas equations have different forms, depende na lang sa kung ano ang mga given sa ating problem. For example, if the mass of the substance is given instead of the number of kilomoles, then we have the formula PV is equal to MRT. In this case, instead of having N, which is the number of kilomoles, we have M, which is the mass in kilograms if we are using SI units. Mapapansin nyo din na sa halip na gumamit tayo ng universal gas constant RU, ang ginagamit natin in this equation ay ang individual gas constant R without the subscript. Take note na ang value ng R without the subscript ay nagbabago depende sa kung anong gaseous substance ang gamit natin. The gas constant R can be obtained by dividing the universal gas constant by the molecular weight of the gas. Make sure na consistent ang units na ginagamit natin. For example, kung ang universal gas constant ay naka-express in terms of kilojoules per kilomole kelvin, ang molecular weight ay dapat nakakilograms per kilomole. Similarly, kung ang universal gas constant ay nakajoules per mole kelvin, dapat ang molecular weight ay nakagrams per mole. For air, ang gas constant ay around 0.287 kilojoules per kilogram kelvin. Kung ang given naman ay ang specific volume ng ideal gas, then we have the following equation. Makikita natin dito na instead of having a volume capital V, we have a specific volume small letter V. That is, in cubic meters per kilogram if we are using SI units. Again, 
R here is the gas constant of the specific gas that we are using. It is not equal to the universal gas constant. Now let's proceed with ideal gas energies. Meron tayong dalawang ideal gas energies na pag-uusapan sa lecture video ito. Ang specific internal energy at specific enthalpy. First, we have the specific internal energy denoted by small letter u. For an ideal gas, the specific internal energy is only a function of temperature. Ibig sabihin, walang effect ang pressure at ang iba pang conditions sa specific internal energy ng ideal gas. The first derivative of u with respect to temperature can be expressed as the constant volume specific heat, Cv. That is, du over dt is equal to Cv of T. Now, if we multiply both sides of the equation with dt, and then perform integration from the initial temperature T1 to the final temperature T2, then the internal energy u at T2 minus u at T1 is equal to the integral of Cv of T dt. That is, evaluated from T1 to T2. Ibig sabihin, if we have the function relating Cv to T, kaya nating evaluate ang difference in internal energy between T1 and T2 without even consulting our thermodynamic tables. In situations when the difference between T1 and T2 are reasonably small, pwede nating i-assume na ang constant volume specific heat ay constant. Recall na ang integral ng non-zero constant ay just the constant itself multiplied by the variable where we are integrating it with respect to. In this case, the integral of Cv dt where Cv is a constant is just equal to Cv times t. Now, evaluating the definite integral from t1 to t2, masasabi natin na ang change in internal energy assuming na ang specific heat ay constant will be equal to Cv multiplied by the quantity of t2 minus t1. In other words, we have delta u is equal to Cv delta t. Next, we have the specific enthalpy H. Just like in the specific internal energy, the specific enthalpy of an ideal gas only depends on the temperature. The derivative of H with respect to T is now equal to the constant pressure specific heat, Cp of T. Performing integration just like what we did before, we have H at T2 minus the H at T1 is equal to the integral of Cp of T dt. Ibig sabihin, Kung meron tayong constant pressure specific heat na expressed in terms of temperature T, kailangan lang natin kunin ang definite integral nito from T1 to T2 para makuha ang change in enthalpy between those two temperatures. Just like before, hindi natin kailangan gamitin ang thermodynamic tables in such cases. Again, kung maliit lang ang difference ng T1 and T2, pwede natin i-assume na ang constant pressure specific heat Cp ay constant. Performing the same integration that we did a while ago, masasabi natin ang difference ng enthalpy ay equal lang sa constant pressure specific heat multiplied by the change in temperature. That is, Cp multiplied by the quantity of T2 minus T1. This formula is highly familiar. In fact, dito natin nakuha ang formula na madalas natin ginagamit sa ating thermophysics class na Q is equal to M times Cp times delta T. Now, let's solve a sample problem about ideal gases. So, let me just read the problem for you. A tank has a volume of 0.5 cubic meters and contains 10 kilograms of an ideal gas having a molecular weight of 24 kilograms per kilomole. The temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. What is the pressure? So to begin with this problem, isulat muna natin lahat ng mga given na ibinigay sa ating word problem. So we have the volume that is equal to 0 0.5 cubic meters. And according to the problem, it contains an ideal gas that has a mass of 10 kilograms. Also, hindi man binigay kung anong klaseng gas or kung anong specific substance yung ginamit sa ating problem. Binanggit naman na ang molecular weight or molecular mass is equal to 24 kilograms per kilomole. The temperature was also given and it is said to be 25 degrees Celsius. 
Now, take note na sa ating mga formula, sa ating ideal gas model, ang temperature na ginagamit natin ay naka-absolute temperature. Therefore, if we are in SI units, we need to convert this to Kelvin. So that is 25 degrees Celsius plus 273.15 Kelvin. If we perform this operation, we have 25 plus 273.15 that is equal to 298.15 Kelvin. Okay, so the one that we are looking for is actually the pressure of the ideal gas. And since yung given sa atin ay yung mass ng ideal gas, we use the formula PV is equal to M R T, where M is the mass and R is the gas constant for that particular ideal gas. So we know that the gas constant R is just equal to the universal gas constant divided by the molecular weight or the molecular mass of the ideal gas that we are using. Therefore, we have the ideal gas constant that is equal to 8.314 kilojoules per kilomole Kelvin, if you remember in our discussion, divided by the molecular weight which is 24 kilograms per kilomole. Now the kilomoles will cancel out leaving us a unit of kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Now, if we plug in these values in our calculator, we have 8.314 divided by 24. We have the gas constant that is equal to 0 0.3464 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. So let me just write that down. Okay, so let's go back to our formula. We know the volume that is equal to 0 0.5 cubic meters. We know also the mass, which is equal to 10 kilograms. The gas constant, we just solved for it. And the temperature, we also solved for it a while ago. So ang matitira lang sa atin na unknown ay yung pressure P. So deriving the formula, we have P that is equal to MRT divided by the volume V. Substituting the values that we know, we have 10 kilograms multiplied by 0 0.3464 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin multiplied by the temperature that is equal to 298.15 Kelvin divided by the volume which is 0 0.5 cubic meters. So let's inspect the units for consistency. Magka-cancel yung kilograms. Magka-cancel yung Kelvin. And ang matitira sa atin ay kilojoules per cubic meters. So, recall that kilojoules per cubic meter is equal to what? That is just equal to kilonewton meter over cubic meter. Which means that we have kilonewton per meter squared. And therefore is equal to kilopascals. So just to show you that the units are consistent. Let's plug these values into our calculator. We have 10 kilograms multiplied by 0 0.3464 times 298 Kelvin, or 298.15 to be more accurate, divided by 0 0.5. That gives us a final answer of around 2,066 kilopascals. So this is the pressure of the substance. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something and see you in the next videos.